random number. Who is this? Hello? Hey, Scott. Uh, this is Sean Yu from Pan Air Robotics, uh, UPenn's SAO design team. Uh, would you guys like to visit us? I don't think I'm going to be able to make it out there. We got a lot of cool stuff going on this weekend. We got flight tests planned uh, and a full plane reveal. Uh, you really don't want to miss it, so you should come. It sounds great. I just don't think SE is going to pay for me to go to Philadelphia. Come on, man. We have cheesesteaks here. Hey, man. I'll see what I can do. There's no way SE is going to pay for me to go to Philadelphia. Welcome everyone to the reveal. So it's an exciting moment. Like after a year of hard work, we finally repeat our the regular class plane this year. Um, so this year, this is our advanced competition aircraft. First of all, we needed to keep it very lightweight. There's a four pound weight limit for the competition, which is why you can see we have such a small design. Uh, furthermore, due to the uh, the the number of quad rotors that were being submitted to competitions, SAE decided to switch it up, and that's why we have. Uh, Penn Air's first vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. So for the competition, um, we are able to take off as a fixed wing plane down a runway and mid-air we're able to transition into control like a quad rotor, um, allowing us to do things like hover and have more uh, precise controls. And we're also able to land both uh, in its vertical mode and in its uh, uh, horizontal mode. We're at Krosky's airport where we got to see Equinox's test flight today. Yeah, I think overall it went pretty well. We had a very smooth takeoff, nice control turns. Obviously a little bit of a rough landing, but uh, it's always hard to bring these big beasts down from pretty fast to still on the ground. So. And then was there anything in particular you were looking to test today or just the flight in general? We actually tested um, this aircraft about a month ago and uh, we had some issues with the main fuselage so we actually had like a nose gear failure on the last flight. We kind of changed the design of the fuselage um, quite a bit um, so we were really looking to test the ground steering capabilities and um, also just controls in general so uh, we've achieved uh, all of those um, targets. So. It's a little colder out today than probably in California. Is the weather going to affect the plane at all? The difference? Colder air uh, leads to denser air, so um, it gives the plane more lift. So as uncomfortable as it is, it is technically good for the plane. Yeah. But um, we have it all in our calculations, so we'll know how to adjust the payload um, and all that stuff at competition. So. And this test flight, did it affect your confidence going into the competition? Are you feeling better? Are you feeling a little worse about going into it? I'm definitely feeling more confident. Um, I think like a bigger part of it is like giving the pilot the practice needed. Um, especially with a brand new aircraft, um, there's kind of a lot of trimming that needs to be done. Um, so the more practice flights that we can put in with our pilot, um, the more confident that we feel um, that we'll be able to perform well at the competition. So it's always a very exciting and inspiring moment. Um, the way the competition is designed uh, lets us build really cool and large airplanes. Um, so getting something that big into the air and like flying is always super cool. Um, the moment that it leaves the ground justifies gravity and it's always just, I think everyone's amazed by it. Um, and even though we've done multiple like test flights with this vehicle and past vehicles, um, it's always a feeling of joy when it successfully takes off. So um, always super fun. So. So as the president, are you in charge of the regular and advanced class? Yeah, yeah. So I kind of oversee the projects. Uh, I run a lot of the operations, um, but I'm mostly involved in the technical side on the regular class. 
because um, that's kind of where I started, um, like last year. So, uh, but I just kind of help out where I could and pull in the resources needed for the team to function. So. Oh, okay. And how many years were you on the team? Yeah, I've been part of the team all four years. So the first two years we competed in a different competition, um, but starting last year we uh, switched to SAO design because it's so awesome. Uh, um, so yeah, so this is our second year competing. In. You said that this is also. Like your workshop is also a classroom. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have to clean up after every time. Yes, yes. So yeah, it is a shared laboratory space. Um, a lot of other student groups also use this space. So we have big like storage cabinets that we store our stuff, but we do have to clean up after okay. each time. So. How many hours do you get in the workshop each week? Yeah, so um, our meetings are generally about two meetings. So uh, we generally have about a three to four hour work session on Saturdays and uh, a two to three hour build session on Wednesdays. Okay. Um, for the technical teams. And then operations, we have a separate operations team that runs separately, and those during meet between one or two hours per week um, to take up operations stuff. So you build in, in this workshop too? Yes. Okay. yes, yes. So everything's built in this workshop. Um, we have separate rooms for like laser cutting and machining, but um, okay. in terms of assembly and integration, everything happens right here. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So then what's going on behind us? What's the whole team up to? Yeah, yeah. So um, we're kind of working on two different projects right now. So one is for the regular class, one is for the advanced class. Um, on this side, um, here closest to us here, there's the software team. Um, so they're developing a lot of the code for the autonomous control for our advanced class um, airplane. Um, on the left side here uh, is most of the mechanical team. Uh, they're kind of working on manufacturing the second uh, regular class airplane that will be bringing the competition. Um, so that's kind of our risk analysis plan is to kind of uh, mitigate the risk of you know weather or like any issues on landing, for example. Um, having a second plane is definitely helpful. We don't want to go all the way out there to the west coast and something accidental happens and you know so we have a backup. <laughs> yeah. So would you take the parts from the second plane to fix the first plane, or would you just use the second plane uh, and you I think fly it that? Depends on the nature of the damage. Um, so this second plane will be slightly better performance than the first plane because we learned, like, we did a lot of flight tests this year, so we learned a lot from the flight test of the first airplane, which you guys saw today. Um, we did another one like a month ago as well, so we have like a lot of data from that, um, and from that we've kind of made some minor design changes for the second airplane that will make it uh, a little bit more, uh, a little stronger, um, and. Um, we also shaved up some weight in some places that are not as important. So the second airplane is better in performance. Um, so that would probably be our primary airplane. Um, depends on the nature of the damage, you know, at competition. Um, it kind of depends if we depends on the situation, also, or you know, if we have a complete loss of the airplane. Then the first one is also pretty good. So yeah. And then do you have a second advanced class plane? Yes, yes. So that's our plan right now. Um, so I think right now we just kind of just finished the mechanical manufacturing of the advanced class. Um, this is kind of a big milestone for us as well because usually um, in competition, like mechanical team wants to spend as much time as possible until the last minute and the software gets like two days to implement their code. So um, it's really exciting for us that now we have, we still have about a month and a half of the competition. Um, we have the vehicle ready um, for the software team to program and do a lot of test flights with because I think there's going to be a lot of tests um, and learning that have to happen. Um, but mechanically, because of the size of the plane, it's not as hard to manufacture as the regular class. Um, yeah. We do use more advanced manufacturing techniques uh, with carbon fiber layups, but um, again, because of the size, it's quicker compared to large 15 foot. So you're building the software for the advanced class, correct? Yes, yes. And what's, go what, uh, what's the process for that? What's going into oh. it? Um, I mean, to like give you a bit of our software like team structure, we have like three sub teams. Um, we have a vision team, a planning team, and a controls team. Um, I guess we work also closely with the electrical team with like you know sensor integration and stuff like that. Uh, but like broadly speaking, for software, um, I'll just go through the sub teams. Yeah, I guess absolutely. one by one. Um, so like vision team, as the name implies, uh, anything um, that requires us to like, or anything that we need to like get a sense of the world, like our surroundings. Um, I guess the pipeline is, is as follows, like we use vision um, to like, you know, given our sensor data, like cameras, stuff like that, to basically like high level wise, like build like a map of the world. And then the planning team, given that information, you know, figures out a mission plan and then it controls like, make, like makes that a reality basically with the motors and stuff and the servos. Um, yeah, and like in terms of like our technical stack, uh, we rely heavily on um, the PixHawk uh, 6C chip and the uh, PX4 autopilot repository. 
I mean, then all of our like logic and computer vision stuff is mainly done through like OpenCV and um, ROS2, basically. And then, what is the mission for the advanced class this year? You have an autonomous vehicle, or optionally autonomous. So we're making it autonomous. Um, take off uh, with the payload, and it's supposed to like find its way to like a designated landing zone um, that's somewhere out there in the field. Um, you want to like drop off that payload uh, onto that landing zone, and you know if you've like gone on previous runs where you've already dropped off like other payloads, like maybe pick one up and like basically like deliver it back to the home base, basically. Okay. Yeah. So you said you chose to do it autonomous. Yes. Um, just for the extra challenge, what made you go, let's do this um, autonomously? I guess just to like rely on our software strengths, I think, well, actually, I'm not sure if this is the case, but our, our team is kind of unique in the sense that we have a pretty well built out software team. Because um, like in the past, uh, you know, software wasn't just for SA Aero, like we like competing in other autonomous competitions as okay. well. Um, so we do have a strong technical background on like the autonomous end. And it just seems like a, yeah, like why not just try yeah. autonomously? And then before, like, yeah, what made you want to join the Aero design team? I guess I come from a computer science background, and like for most of the computer science people here at Penn, um, there really isn't another team slash club that does like what we do. Um, I guess maybe like Penn Electric Racing does also have a software team, but the software work that they do is like more low level, like high, high uh, low latency, like um, low low level programming stuff. Um, but that might not that's like not so not so attractive to like some of the people like some CIS majors like, or CS majors, I guess. Uh, the work that's done here at Penn is like I think quite exciting. Um, you know, computer vision, autonomous control, and planes are obviously cool, right? And then what was the work that you put in f so far to make it to this point in the build process? Um, so it's kind of, it all started right after um, the competition last year um, when I decided, um, and the team decided to put in a lot of work over the summer. Um, that way we would come into the school year even, like, prepared for, for this year, so we would have kind of a basis already um, to start building upon like as soon as the rules came out. And then over the school year we kind of just refined the design and we all put a bunch of work in, like this is probably about half the group that there usually is and just a lot of time working together, always trying to fix things, always testing, um, trying to push I guess the limits of how much weight we can save, how much power we can get from from the engine, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then what was the biggest challenge you guys faced this season? Probably the like payoff between cutting weight, but it's still being strong enough. As, as you saw in the flight test earlier today, um, it's a very fine balance that is hard to kind of, I guess, like tiptoe around because it, there, there are like a lot of unexpected things that you can't really calculate in FEA and all, the, all that kind of stuff um, that, that makes the like, design really hard because you, at the end of the day you're trying to make the plane as light as possible, right? But it still needs to be able to deal with all the forces that go into flight and go into really hard landings and impacts and still survive. So that's probably the hardest thing, kind of. Like what was the thing you learned from last season that you fixed and put into this plane? Um, so the biggest thing is last year we built a one-third scale model like in the fall and that kind of destroyed our build process um, before competition because we had basically spent three months building something that we weren't actually going to use. Um, so we changed that. This year we went straight into full scale. That way we, we've had the whole school year to build. Um, so that's, that's probably been the biggest thing in terms of time. Um, yeah. and do you see a lot of benefits from that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, because like, you don't spend two months gluing pieces of wood together that then won't even fly. And then also, it lets you um, spend more time refining the actual like plane more, because even right now, we're still tweaking stuff that you wouldn't be able to tweak. Um, okay, yeah otherwise, right? Because you've been tweaking on one plane, but then once you scale it up, it doesn't necessarily scale the same way. So it didn't, doesn't really help, so yeah. And then are you able to apply a lot from what you learned in classes into building uh, this airplane or no? Is this something that you have to kind of learn on your own and yeah, apply? Yeah, I think, I mean, you can do like the moment balances and I learned, like as a mechanical engineer, I learned how to do like FEA somewhat in class. Um, but like all the CAD, all that kind of stuff is much more complicated than you see in class, I think. Um, 
I'm in a UAV design class right now, but I, that's like a few months too late, right? I guess if I'd taken it last semester, it would have changed something, but not, not now. But otherwise, I, I mean, this is like a fairly specific thing, right? So yeah. it's like... Does your experience yeah. here help you in the class? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Uh, looking at all the CL versus AOA graphs, all that kind of stuff is like, I've seen so many now that... Huh. That's a nice little I, bonus then, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it makes it a lot easier.